And so as a robot trainer working on VEX CDRs, you gotta know how to code your robot to drive via input from the controller. We're doing that today. It's called Tell so All about that Tell Yup Live, T-O, T-O. So if you know VEX Robotics, you know that there's something they show everywhere. It's called the Clawbot, and that's what we're building today. You can build this robot with either the dual control starter kit or the programming control starter kit from VEX. Then you're gonna code the robot to be driven in either tank or arcade drive. Then you're gonna compete in the Saber Stack Battle. Let's -a go. Let's do this. Grab your set of Clawbot instructions and get to work building. When you get to the end of the build, be sure to follow those wiring instructions carefully. And note that the arm motor and the claw motor actually plug into motor controllers, which help regulate the speed of the motors. Also note that the ground wire always goes on the outside. P.S. Instructions actually tell you to plug in the arm motor backwards. And this is just another way of reversing the motor. In this case, reversing the motor is just gonna make it so that a positive number in the code will make the arm go up. And before you move on, get your wiring approved by the official electrical inspector TM. Time to go code. Before we code, we actually have to pair the controller with the Cortex. All you gotta do is click the link, click the link in the description, it'll take you to a pairing tutorial, and then come back here when you've got that all squared away. Tonight, we are trying to map the joystick on the controllers to the drivetrain motors so that we drive the robot either tank style or arcade style. We wanna code the arm to move up or down depending on which button is pressed. We also want the claw to either open or close depending on which button is pressed. Let's open up robot scene, get to work. First things first, make sure that your platform is VEX 2.0 Cortex. Make sure you have VEXnet or USB checked under communication mode uh, because we are planning on connecting wirelessly. Let's just set up the motors. Okay, so. We have the left motor plugged into port one, which we want to reverse. We got our right plugged into port 10, the claw plugged into port six, and the arm in port seven. Okay, so we want a loop that will constantly check for buttons being pressed. So we want a while loop that always runs. While one equals one, which translates in code to while one equals equals one, is always true. So the loop will always run. I'm gonna show you how to code tank drive first. So the axes for each joystick are numbered. The vertical or Y axis on the right joystick is called channel two. For the left joystick is channel three. A horizontal or X axis on the right joystick is channel one. For the left is channel four. You can think of the channels like a little graph. Each channel has a range from negative one to positive one, which will translate into a range from full speed backwards to full speed forwards on your robot. Sometimes negative one is full speed forwards, whatever. So for tank drive, all you're gonna do is map the vertical channel on each joystick to one side of the drivetrain. So the commands for this are gonna be exactly like when you give the motor power, except in this case, the amount of power it gets depends on where the joystick is, vertically speaking, at any given time. So as the joystick moves either up or down, it's gonna track that and translate that into power to the motors. So we're gonna map the speed of the left side to the vertical position of the left joystick, AKA channel three, like this. Okay, boom. We're gonna map the speed of the right side of the drivetrain to the vertical position of the right joystick, AKA channel two. So it's gonna look like this. And there you go, that is tank drive. So you can save it, you can download it, and then you can plug one VEXnet dongle into your controller and the other into your Cortex, and then you can run the code and test out tank drive. I'm gonna show you how to do arcade drive now. So pick which joystick you wanna control your bot with, because that is gonna affect the channels that you're using. So I'm gonna use the right joystick, so I'll be focused on channels one and two. Now the speed that the left motor goes will be equal to the vertical position of the joystick, remember within the range of negative one to one, plus the horizontal position. Then it takes the sum of those two numbers, halves it, and translates that to your motor power. Same thing for the right side of your drivetrain, except it's subtracting the horizontal position from the vertical. That's a lot, That's, that is a lot. But it's gonna sink in over time. If you actually were to plug in real numbers for the joystick positions and see how that translates into certain speeds for the drivetrain, it's good. it will make sense. Okay, so back out to the code. Now that we've taken care of the drivetrain, let's move on to the arm motor. For this motor, there are essentially three scenarios. If the button that makes it go up is pressed, if the button that makes it go down is pressed, or if no button's pressed. The button I wanna use to raise the arm is upper button five. So I'll say that if button five up equals one, or is true, or AK is pressed, <laughs> then raise the arm. Otherwise, if lower five button is pressed, then lower the arm. I recommend doing a pretty slow speed to start because you're gonna need to make really tiny adjustments for the battle. And finally, if neither's pressed, we don't want the arm to move. I actually like to set this to a super low number, like seven instead of zero, because that way the arm actually holds its position against gravity. For the claw motor, we're gonna do the exact same structure, uh, but we need to change the buttons. So I'm gonna do upper six to close the claw, lower six to open it, and then we'll change the motor to claw motor. Again, slow speed in this case is good. And then you can just change that to zero. And let's test it. Oh my God, let's, let's go test it. Here are some things you can add to your code to make it 20% cooler. Just 20. For the arm, you can use a set of buttons for slow up and slow down, and then a set of two different buttons for fast up and fast down. So you'll need two different if-else statements 
Is your drivetrain too fast for your own good? Well, then all you have to do is multiply by a fraction of what it was to scale down the speed. Do it something like this for tank drive and something like this for arcade drive, basically taking 80% of what it was. So it'll slow it down a little bit. Warrior, it is time for battle. Welcome, Robot Trainer, to the Saber Stack Battle. Now, before we get started, oh. it is important to know that this is a game of precision and patience, which is reflected in the time. An eight minute battle. I mean, what? have you ever seen anything like this, Greta? No. Let's just wait, dive wait, wait, in. wait, 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 wait. Your and your robot's mission is to fully assemble a lightsaber out of pieces. Saber scraps are located around the battle arena. You have eight minutes to put them onto the rod. Once you've assembled it, you must power it on using the conveniently located big red button. Now it is crucial to grab those saber scraps upright for ease of sliding. Should a piece fall over or become too tilted to slide, you, you the driver, have the ability to right the scraps if your robot's not touching them. Best of luck, warrior, and may the force be with you. Best of luck, warrior, and remember, remember the, the force, force be with you. Yeah. 